Hi everyone, welcome to Read, Write, Create. My name is Katya. If you like what you see, remember to click like and subscribe so that you can watch more of my content. You'll find timestamps in the video description so that you can jump to a specific section. Over the last year, I've been adding novels by Japanese authors to my TBR list, so that is my to-be-read list, as recommended by some of my favourite channels. And the most recent one that I picked up is called The Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories. So this book is described as a celebration of Japanese short story from its modern origins in the 19th century to remarkable contemporary works. It includes the most well-known Japanese writers, and I'm going to have to have a look to see, <laughs> um, Akutagawa, Murakami, Mishima, Kawabata, but also many surprising new pieces from Yuko Tsushima's Flames to Banana Yoshimoto's Bee Honey, ranging over myth, horror, love, nature, modern life, a diabolical painting, a cow with a human face, and a woman who turns into sugar. The Penguin Book of Japanese short stories is filled with fear, charm, beauty, and comedy. So I heard about this book from the Codex Cantina, and on their channel they do this wonderful series that provides a short story summary, analysis, and review. And these videos are about 10-15 uh, minutes long, and they managed to put so much into their discussion. And that is how I actually got to hear about a couple of the quirky tales featured in this book, such as The Box by Teiko Kono, and The Tale of the House of Physics by Yoko Ogawa. Now, Yoko Ogawa has been mentioned so many times on booktube, so I'm going to stick with her. And my next two books are from this author. So next up is The Memory Police. And this was featured, well, it's been featured all over booktube, but I first heard about it from Books and Bow. And the channel reviews mostly fiction in translation, as well as books by women and queer writers, and promotes indie publishers, indie bookshops, and diverse literature. So the back says, hat, ribbon, bird, rose. To the people on the island, a disappeared thing no longer has any meaning. It can be burned in the garden, thrown in the river, or handed over to the memory police. Soon enough, the island forgets it ever existed. When a young novelist discovers that her editor is in danger of being taken away by the memory police, she desperately wants to save him. For some reason, he doesn't forget, and it is becoming increasingly difficult for him to hide his memories. Who knows what will vanish next? So that sounds really good. Um, it says on the front there, Beautiful and Haunting, a dreamlike story of dystopia. And then we have <laughs> The Housekeeper and the Professor. Now, this is from a mystery booktuber, and that's not a channel name. Uh, maybe it is, but it's not a channel name that I know. It's actually um, just that I've entirely forgotten who uh, talked about it, but I really liked what they said and I remember commenting and I thought I knew who it was and I went back to their channel and I had a look and I can see no mention on this channel of this book. So it must be someone entirely different. Um, anyway, long story. If you remember me saying I was getting this book because of your review, let me know in the comments and I'll credit you when I've read the book. So it says, beautiful, twisted and brilliant. He is a brilliant maths professor who lives with only 80 minutes of short-term memory. She is a sensitive and astute young housekeeper who is entrusted to take care of him. Each morning, as the professor and the housekeeper are reintroduced to one another, a strange, beautiful relationship blossoms between them. The professor may not remember what he had for breakfast, but his mind is still alive with elegant equations from the past. He devises clever math riddles, based on her shoe size or her birthday, and the numbers reveal a sheltering and poetic world to both the housekeeper and her ten-year-old son. With each new equation, the three lost souls forge an affection 
more mysterious than imaginary numbers and a bond that runs deeper than memory. And the person that reviewed it so loved this book and I just had to um, pick it up. So I'm looking forward to starting that. Then there is There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuko Tsumara. And this was recommended by Tokyo Chemist but equally uh, recommended by a friend who's a non-booktuber. So this is, I think, pretty much what it says on the blurb. A woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally very little thinking. She is sent to a nondescript office building and tasked with watching the hidden camera feed of an author suspected of storing contraband goods but watching someone for hours isn't as good as it sounds. How will she stay awake? When can she take delivery of her favourite brand of tea? And perhaps more importantly, how did she find herself in this situation in the first place? As she moves from job to job, writing adverts for shops that mysteriously disappear and composing advice for rice cracker wrappers that generate thousands of devoted followers, it becomes increasingly apparent that she's not searching for the easiest job at all, but something altogether more meaningful. So certainly looking forward to that one. Next up, we have Convenience Store Woman, which I heard about through Remembered Reads. She's 36 years old, she's never had a boyfriend, and she's been working in the same convenience store for 18 years. Her parents wish she'd get a better job. Her friends wonder why she won't get married. But Kiko knows what makes her happy, and she's not going to let anyone take her away from her convenience store. Again, this sounds brilliant. It says it's intoxicating as a sake mojito, which I've actually never had. Exhilaratingly weird and funny. And finally, I've got Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. And I first heard about this book through Sluggish Reader. And once he'd mentioned it, I saw it all over BookTube. But really, Sluggish Reader tends to have these books that I haven't heard of. And then he, you know, just um, has this wonderful way of talking about them and making me want to get them. So I am glad that I got Kitchen. It isn't um, my favourite story of 2021, uh, but I enjoyed it. I found it slow going to, you know, at the start, but as we get into the middle and the end section, it really picks up. It says, Kitchen is two tales about mother's transsexuality bereavement, Kitchen's love and tragedy. When it was first published in 1987, it won two of Japan's most prestigious literary prizes remained at the top of the bestsellers list for over a year and sold millions of copies. Yoshimoto was hailed as the voice of young Japan by The Independent on Sunday. This new edition celebrates the 30th anniversary of a startlingly original work. And it's very reflective um, and it's got this wonderful sort of like repressed atmosphere to it with these characters who aren't, well, I shouldn't tell you the story, but I, I enjoyed it because it does give you the feel for the place and for the characters. Um, surprisingly or controversially, I don't know, I actually preferred the short story at the end of this edition. Um, so Kitchen is short. This book is less than 200 pages long, but at 109 pages, um, you get the second story already. So, you know, it's a short story there and a much shorter story towards the end, which is called Moonlight Shadow. And I thought that was beautiful. It's, you know, got this haunting quality to it. So, yeah, I was really happy with this book. And um, if you live in the EU and you would like this book, uh, then let me know in the comments and I will post it out. Um, I guess I'd have to do it as a giveaway in case more people want it. If you're the only person in the comment section who says they want it, then it's yours. If there are going to be multiple people saying that they want it, then I'll um, try and do that randomizer wheel thing for the first time. And um, then I'll post it out to you. And that brings me to the end of all of the um, books that I've picked up over the year. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books and um, 
Yeah, take care.